Welcome back, this is a follow-up video to a Raspberry Pi video that I put out, I'm gonna say November. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time to get back to this one, but I just wanted to sort of uh, embed it in because I promised I would come back and I would talk about my experiences using the Raspberry Pi 400, which is the keyboard and Raspberry Pi all-in-one combo, uh, which I unboxed in the previous video and then I, I sort of uh, showed me using. So I just want to talk about my experiences about that, and that's really what this video is about. So the first thing I want to talk about is the ease of use and setting up of, of the, the Raspberry Pi. So I downloaded an application on my MacBook, uh, which is the Pi Writer application. Uh, you can There's ones for Linux, there's ones for, I think there's one for the Raspberry Pi as well, um, but there's definitely one for the PC, and and you put in your SD card, whatever size SD card you happen to have. I have a, I have a Raspberry Pi on this one because this is actually my operating system that I'm using just now. Um, and it's just a micro SD card. So it's the, the little tiny, tiny, teeny ones. And you'll see that it's this tiny, teeny little guy here. Um, and that is, that's the one that goes into the back of the Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, super simple to set up. Um, in fact, so much so that I actually started to install uh, different operating systems, but I'll get to that in just a sec. So it was just a, a simple matter of uh, plugging that, that SD card into the Raspberry Pi and then booting up the Raspberry Pi, going through the, the sort of installation part where you where you are, your locale, Wi-Fi password, all that kind of stuff, and it got me into the desktop. But then I thought to myself, uh, I need to go a little bit further with this because I want to be able to, to use this um, on a on a daily basis uh, so there's, it, there's missing some programs that I wanted to do so I decided to go and go ahead and get them get those programs the first of which is actually the one I'm using just now I'm actually running this on a Raspberry Pi this is OBS uh, and I can prove it I can just go to the scene mode and you can see I'll just move me out the road there uh, and you can see that uh, this is the Raspberry Pi desktop. This is the the <laughs> it's the Raspberry Pi. This is me running OBS on a Raspberry Pi. I never thought this would be possible. Uh, it's quite amazing. So I can uh, one of the first things I installed was was OBS. In order to install that, I had to install uh, lib. Uh, what was it? GD, GCC. Um, there was a whole bunch of other things I had to install. Uh, one of the most invaluable sites for all of this. Uh, I'm just going to bring it up here. So this is me running Chromium. So this is just the, the default Chromium web browser. Um, if I go to, uh, where are we? Um, Reno Sound. So the, one of the first things that I ran into was the was a problem with um, no sound over HDMI. Uh, and this website here, Raspberry, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, website, sorry, uh, it told me how to to uh, configure it. Uh, basically, you just go in here and then change uh, the boot config uh, file, and it, it just works. The next thing was I wanted to get uh, ZSH on a Raspberry Pi, so I, I just used Google for all of this. Uh, it was super easy to find these things. It's just Raspberry Pi and uh, ZSH. Uh, in order to install it, you need to install a couple of get bits and pieces. Um, ZSH is, uh, or the Z shell, or Z shell, or whatever you want to call it, is the terminal program that runs when you start a new terminal. So in this example here, I've got OBS. Uh, so OBS is currently running um, in here because there's a couple of gotchas. Uh, if I start a new terminal window, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, OBS compiles, you have to compile it from source, but it works, it takes about, I think it took 15 minutes, I think, on here. It doesn't take long to build it, um, but when you do build it, you uh, it, it installs OBS, but the, the issue is uh, it didn't work with the, the device driver. Right? If I if I tried to run it from here, so I went to sign a video and went to OBS Studio, it didn't run, so I had to run it through this little uh, script file. Uh, I can't remember where I found this from, but I think it was in one of the OBS forums, but if I do more OBS, uh, this is all I had to do is I had to um, uh, OBS is, is installed to uh, I think which OBS yeah so it's installed to the user bin uh, folder there uh, which is a great command because you can figure out like which Python 3 so it tells you where Python 3 is installed the, the, the actual interpreter for it so uh, it just uh, sets this up here, the, the GL version override, and then it runs OBS and 
everybody's happy. Um, so yeah, that, that was cool. So uh, yeah, I use um, ZSH um, at work, like I said, and uh, I I wanted to use it here. So that was one of the first things I, one of the many first things that I installed. Um, so yeah, uh, the other one was Raspberry Pi fonts because you notice that that I have uh, curly keys, so which is the Phantasma Phantasmic font, I think it is. Uh, I'll put a link to these in the, in the show notes. Uh, it's a great font. Um, I think you'll all agree. It's a very nice font, uh, especially the curly case. So you can do things like, you know, LSL, and you can see that it's like .pki and, and things like that. Um, I think I've got everything in documents. Um, yeah, hello world, repos, share, LS, repos. Okay. Um, and what else did I install? I also installed. Where's Mono Game? I also installed Mono because I wanted to run um, bits and pieces. But I also wanted to return C spec as well. But I don't know where. I also wanted to run C spec, but um, is this in downloads? Downloads. LS. Oh yeah, C spec. C spec. Okay, so if I run this in here, uh, it needs to run using mono. So I, uh, if you go to Mike Daly's website, which is um, daily dot. Again, I'll put a link in the notes below. Uh, you can get the C spec emulator uh, to run it. Uh, it's just it's just the exe so so it's just c spec but you have to run it using the mono framework so that's why it's um, mono c spec and then I specified the next rom that was a bit of a pain trying to find the the rom images it's on the zx spectrum next website uh, but you can see that uh, next rom enabled and it fires up and there you go I'm in I, I now have uh, it's rather clicky. Uh, but I now have next basic available, so I can do 10 print. Um, is it this one? Oh, I can remember which one it is. Hello world, halo world. Oops, 20 go to 10. Right, there you go. So now I've got an, an emulator uh, for the ZX Spectrum in there, and it plays games and, and it's all running in OBSs is just fine about it. I really shouldn't do that though. There you go. Um, it, if you hit escape, it, it bombs out, which is kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, th um, the other thing I looked up is uh, webcams, uh, how to get them to, to run with standard webcams. Uh, it's actually quite easy. Uh, again, if you go to raspberrypi.org slash documentation slash usage slash webcams, everything's in here. Um, there was, what was the other one I found? Raspberry Pi tips. This is the one here. So install fonts in a Raspberry Pi. RaspberryPiTips.com uh, is a is a great resource. If you are new to Raspberry Pi, you should definitely check out RaspberryPiTips.com. Uh, it's uh, invaluable, um, and it explains how to install uh, the fonts. Um, there's a whole bunch of other tips as well in here. Um, but yeah, I I've been using this predominantly, uh, but I've also looked into the world of Ubuntu and um, RetroPie. Now I installed Ubuntu and it worked great, flawlessly in fact. It's a 64-bit it's a operating system, it's running on the Raspberry Pi, it runs fantastically well. It's, it's a dream to use. I think for me though, the only reason I would need it is if I have guests over and I don't want to you know, give them the password or whatever it is to my main machine. I can then just give them the Raspberry Pi 400 and then say, oh, here you go. And just plug in, you know, my teeny tiny Ubuntu SD card and it can fire up Firefox because it defaults to Firefox. It's a familiar enough browser. Uh, and then they can download plane tickets and whatever it is they need to do to, to get online from there. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, a nice safe kind of sandbox um, for people. Uh, the biggest problem I had with Ubuntu though was I tried, I tried, because I, I love the the Ubuntu, I love the the the, the desktop for 
for Ubuntu. I tried, believe me, I tried to get the things that I wanted installed on there and I just couldn't do it. I wanted to get Visual Studio installed. Uh, so VS Code, I had to compile from source on the Raspberry Pi. Again, it took 15, 20 minutes. It wasn't long. Um, I, I did that uh, and it worked. And you can see that I have the icon up here and everything's okay, everything's hunky-dory. Um, but I could not install anything on Ubuntu. It just wouldn't let it, like, I had to go way back to the, the, the wood, so, so so to speak. And I had to install um, GCC, which is fine. Uh, I had to do that on the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, that worked. Um, I then tried to install Yarn because the thread, <laughs> the thread, Yarn thread, uh, it was, I wanted to install Yarn, but I couldn't install Yarn. I had to install uh, Brew first, I think it was. Um, but I couldn't install Brew because I didn't have Curl. I couldn't install Curl because I didn't have something else. And it ended up going way back to that. And I couldn't get an ARM version of the basic thing that I needed. And I can't remember what it was, but basically, if anyone out there, please put a comment below. If you're running Ubuntu, the the one the new one that comes with the the sort of base for the Raspberry Pi. If you're running Ubuntu and you're running Visual Studio Code, tell me how you did it in the comments below because I would love to know how. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other tools in there like OBS. I couldn't I just couldn't get it to work. Uh, I tried as well because again I ran into the same problem. I needed this like base package and I couldn't get it installed. Um, so yeah, that was my that was my my trials with Ubuntu. Uh, as far as Raspbian's concerned. It's fantastic. It does it, everything I wanted to do, coding-wise. Um, whether I'm producing videos, I can I can produce videos on here, and it's not bad. I mean, I, I've I've kind of blown it up. It it goes to like a, a four by three aspect ratio, so I've just kind of blown it up for this this particular recording. Um, and the the rest of the 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 operating system is is uh, is fine as well. I mean, it's you know most of the stuff I do is on a command line prompt anyway, so it, it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's a Mac or a PC. I tend to all use I use Commander on the PC, which is you know got ls um, and you know Linux type commands. So I I tend to use almost the same thing across all systems that I have. Um, so, you know, I didn't really notice any difference. Uh, as far as the speed's concerned, I think this is fast enough. Uh, it does a good job of, of I mean, uh, the, the stuff I'm writing in here is like JavaScript and, and Python and, and things like that. So it's not exactly like I'm taxing the system, uh, but it's fast enough for my needs. Uh, I didn't ever feel like it was slowed down. Um, I, I ran into a problem. I, I think I mentioned this in a, in a couple of videos ago on my main machine. Um, that I ran into a problem where things were slowing down. Not so with uh, this uh, this system. It's been fine. Uh, I haven't noticed it being really hot either, so that's really good. Um, but the other operating system I tried on here is uh, RetroPie, and it worked kind of. Uh, I got it. I got it installed on an SD card. Used exactly the same technique as as, as uh, Ubuntu and also uh, Raspbian. I used the the, the retro, the Raspberry Pi Writer uh, app and wrote it onto an SD card. I got it to work. As far as the menu is concerned, and then it said you don't have any input devices. And I'm looking at the the game controller, and I'm like, um, I I do have an input device. It's just you're not recognizing it. So I did a search. And it turns out that it does work with the Xbox controller, but it only works with the wired controller. I think there may be a, like a Bluetooth one you can you can download or whatever. But like if you want it to be like hundred percent compatible, it'll work with that wired controller, which I have, and I had plugged into there. But you have to enable it in the settings. So you go to the the settings, which is the like the Pi configuration. You know that DOS settings where you set various options up. Um, and I set it all up there, rebooted everything. I had the I had it plugged in. I tried it not plugging it in, tried plugging it in later. It it didn't respond. It didn't light it's supposed to light up the control. It's a third party uh, 360 controller that I use on my Xbox 360 and on my PC and it works flawlessly on, on those machines. Um and it didn't work. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Again, comments below if uh if you've got any um 
debugging steps, but I've I've enabled the driver for Xbox uh, controllers, uh, but it's just not picking it up. So I don't know I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But uh, yeah, that was it. That's just my uh, my little thoughts on on the Raspberry Pi, uh, the the 400 specifically, the keyboard built in. Uh, fantastic to use uh the keyboard is it's um pretty much full well looking at other keyboards there it's pretty much full size it's like a laptop style keyboard uh it's perfectly good to type on uh, i didn't feel any strain it didn't feel like i was like hammering on like plastic keys i know they're plastic keys uh they're all plastic keys every keyboard's plastic keys it didn't feel like i was hammering on like a tabletop uh, it felt good uh the mouse is really good it's really responsive it's actually quite a nice mouse. It's kind of reminiscent. I don't know if anybody's uh, seen this before, but it's kind of reminiscent of the, the old uh, um, Amiga mouse. The Amiga 600, at least to me. I'm probably misremembering. But anyway, it's it's a fine mouse. It's, it works works okay, so uh, I get no complaints from it. But yeah, as far as uh, this package is concerned, could I recommend this? Uh, yes. The question posed though was, is it a good desktop replacement? That's where I'm a bit, it depends on what you want to do. You're not going to be building um, Unity applications with this. At least I haven't tried to do that yet. Maybe it's possible in the future, but I haven't, I haven't tried that yet. If you are building Python, Pygames, uh, or uh, if you're using like Pixie GS or Phaser or like one of those kind of like 2D engines, um, that are based on, on Java script. This is a great machine. Uh, it's a fantastic machine if you want to get your kids involved with programming. Uh, the book as well, which I haven't mentioned uh, in this video. The book is fantastic, it's full color, explains all the steps. You've got the expansion board at the back that you can like do, go into breakout boards and breadboards and things. You can light up LEDs um, if you want. You can. Uh, use my book as well which is not here um which i'll probably throw up over the top here not throw up obviously um <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about now um but yeah it's I, I think it's a fantastic machine uh if all you're doing is if your use case is um like reading emails or browsing the web or whatever it is or if that's all that you use a computer for this is a really cheap, this is cheaper, absolutely cheaper. And I would, I would, I would say a smidge, smidge better than a Chromebook. Uh, it plugs into TV. I know it's not as portable, but um, nine times out of 10, you can be plugging it into something anyway, whether it's a wall socket or whatever. Uh, I think for the, for the money that you're paying for this device, this is every bit as good as a Chromebook, if not better. And so that's that's my advice. If all you're doing is surfing the web and writing the occasional program, this it's like a hundred bucks. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect for that. If you want to do something a little bit more intensive, like writing 3D games, maybe not as good, but definitely definitely usable as far as as a, a sort of everyday. Let's check the web, Facebook, those kind of machines. It's a perfect desktop replacement for those kind of functions, in my humble opinion. Anyway, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. If you want to leave a comment in the, the notes and uh, just underneath the, the show notes below, I'll add links to those things that I was talking about. Um, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you want timely reminders when I put a new video up, then um, hit the notification uh, button and the notification bell. And YouTube will work its algorithmic magic and feed up a video to you, I presume. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it works on the algorithm side. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.